Hey man, it's Ryan Bridge Bugman, and guess what? We're in Arizona, and we are in Miller Canyon, just outside of Sierra Vista, and we are gonna be blacklighting. And to get that done, we're gonna be showing you how we set up the system, and then we're gonna take you on a ride through a night of blacklighting in Arizona. So man, I'm excited, I'm cranked and stoked to make this happen for you guys, because if all goes well, this is gonna be a ton of cool bug fun in Arizona. Stay with me. Okay guys, uh, look, we're gonna take you through the process of setting up the lights. Uh, we've laid out a couple things just to get us started in a basic sense, but hang on because this is gonna go fast. Black lighting is one of the many terms used for running lights at night to attract insects. Everyone has their own preference for light setups and when we're in Arizona, we use a variety of systems. Our preferred method is a supported setup along with a ground sheet. We use a combination of ultraviolet and mercury vapor light. Wattage can also vary to one's preference, but for tonight, we're using a 1000 watt mercury vapor bulb. Insects will almost immediately come to the lights, and if the weather holds, that number is only gonna increase all night long. Once running, all we have to do is wait for the insects to arrive. Tonight, we're joined by a few members from the Arizona Bug Club, including Evan Waite. Evan is a PhD student from Arizona State University who majors in evolutionary biology. Evan also specializes in Coleoptera, the beetles, specifically Carabidae, which are the ground beetles. Tonight, He's searching for a very rare beetle that has only been found in two places, one of which just happens to be Miller Canyon. Check it out, man. We're in Miller Canyon in Arizona. And tonight, not only are we running regular blacklight stations, but we're also going to be playing around with a whole new style of blacklighting introduced to us by Casey Smith from the Bugman LL Support team. That said, Casey, can you explain to us what is going on here? Because this is a little odd. Can you explain to us what is going on and most of all, where you get an idea like this? Well, Ryan, um, this was actually uh, introduced to me by a uh, researcher at ASU uh, entomology department. And uh, he got the idea uh, of getting these uh, from China. They're basically, it's basically, I think, used for displays. But it's a black light and it's used for displays and uh, you oh. see, you, you, can, you, you know, put something on there, you know, shine the black light, uh, make a beautiful display. But he was like, well, these would be perfect for catching um, beetles, moths, anything that's attracted to ultraviolet. So his idea was to take them and put them in a semi-opaque bag, like this Ziploc bag, which also protects it from the weather. So, so we're leaving them in the bags. Yes. That's genius. Yeah, leave them in the bag. That seals them. It also keeps the little bugs from <laughs> getting inside them and messing them up. And then uh, he lays them on the ground on a sheet. I got thinking, well, if the, the light is shining up and the little reflection on this plastic, it's not really going out horizontally very much. So my, my spin on it was to put them in these little white laundry baskets. And you can see how much that lights up the laundry basket. Okay, so go, and ahead, go ahead and set it down. We'll see what's going on here. And then you can see. Oh, that's amazing. That, in, Especially if you're in a, we're in the light still. So you see in the dark, Yeah. you can lay them, lay them like that. <laughs> I, I've, I've caught in things using this where the wind is blowing and everything. I put a rock in there to hold it down and uh, and you could not possibly set up uh, sheets or anything, and I still able to catch the target uh, insect. The other thing that you can do is with the little handles, you can hang them like little like lanterns in a tree, and the uh, moths and, and bugs and all that will land on here, and then you just can go by and collect them. And I think we'll be showing uh, everybody that later on tonight. Yeah, outstanding. So. All right, so how long have you been doing this? I've been using these for about three years, three years now. Amazing. And success rate, one out of a hundred. Well, like I said, it has really, really saved, saved the trip. 
uh, on two occasions. One occasion I flew all the way from Arizona to Louisiana just to catch uh, a really rare um, silt moth uh, which I, uh, in the Isle moth family. Uh, it's found in the silt, uh, salt marshes so, uh, and it flies in February in the, and it was 36 degrees, windy, it was terrible. You couldn't be outside for more than five minutes. And the guy that's going to come with the, with the sheets and the lights says, there is no way you're going to catch that moth. There's no way anything's flying in this weather. And he lives there. And uh, I set out six of these and caught f four of those moths. <laughs> and uh, so that that was one incident. And then another incident, uh, there's a beetle that flies in the sand dunes in western Arizona. I set the big light, the mercury vapor light. Nothing came, none of them came. But for the mile to there, uh, I had set these like every 100 yards all the way there. And I'm collecting them, nothing, nothing, nothing. I get to the very last one, nearly a mile away from the sand dune where they're supposed to be, and there's two underneath it. I picked so it up. So they were actually under it? Yeah, they were actually under it. Wow. <laughs> and and uh, and like I said, I'd, I'd driven you know several hours to, to find that one, a very rare uh, scarab. All right, so we're gonna do this. Now you recommended what, up the creek, up the dry creek bed then? To yeah, that would, that would be great, because uh, okay. stuff going up and down the creek. All right, uh, so that's what we're gonna do, guys. We're gonna take this, <laughs> we're gonna take laundry baskets with UV light. How awesome is this? Hey guys, just like we just got done with KC, we're gonna set these basket traps up, and this is what it's all about. And you place the light in, check these out. That is incredible. So we're gonna set this one here and then we're gonna work our way down into the creek bed and we're gonna, we're gonna put a bunch more all the way up the creek bed. So we can put these basket lights on the ground all night long and they're still gonna pro probably produce. But by elevating these things off the ground, it puts it up there where more things could see it. This, this UV light is now gonna shoot all the way to Casey's system, all the way up through this dark area. We put it in under these, this real dark spot to we're gonna really collect and push this UV light to the max. So bringing it up off the ground allows that light to spread out. dip too low on this and we'll get up on the high side over here just on the other side sort of between his and our setup okay, okay. yeah that's not bad nice good deal Ooh, All right, man, so that's it. We just ran a nice little barrage of basket light traps up through this, this dry wash. Um, look, man, it is dark back here. And these things look like purple ghosts hanging up in these trees. They are amazing. So we're gonna now back out and we're gonna let these things just do their job. We're gonna come in here maybe every other hour or so and check these things and see what kind of insects have come to these traps. How cool are these things. Kudos to Casey and that guy who told him all about this because this is a neat, neat, That's this is just a cool tactic. I don't, know how, I don't care who you are. It's a neat tactic.
Okay, Steve, so we're not too late in the evening. It's 10.55, it's 11 o'clock, and we're just now gonna go uh, searching for vinegaroons. I think they're active all night. Okay. I don't think they have a, a bedtime until daytime, so they should be active. Okay, well, if you notice, couple things we got going for us um, it's obviously warmer here than it was in the Chiricahuas and it is obviously uh, a little wetter or at least more diverse habitat here than it was in the Chiricahuas but we know the vinegaroons are in the region because how many did you find a week ago oh god I found four five six <laughs> something like that so okay. they're, they're around all right good so tonight finally come together we're gonna do a vinegaroon hunt and admittedly I'm totally new at this I've never been to this area and I've never done this particular type of hunt I've done almost all road cruising where you sit in a car and you watch the headlights out in front and see but this time we're actually coming into this environment it looks like it's low scrub I can't really tell because it's kind of dark but um, we're gonna walk and use flashlights I also brought my ultraviolet light so apparently there's scorpions here and apparently there's camel spiders here so you never know but we're gonna go in here and we're gonna hike for vinegaroons tonight this might get fun stay with me guys if you want to explore out or i say we spread out but if anybody finds one we gotta yell oh camel spider big one all right ah, ah, hang on be fast Climb. <laughs> I've never seen them climb. I'll just get us into trouble here. Because I might have. A little bit of scratch. Look out for that stuff. It's not friendly. It's not Vinegaroons are known as a whip tail scorpion. That which looks like a whip tail is actually a tube. And that tube feeds into the abdomen and that enables the vinegaroons to release a smell like vinegar. Vinegar smell is gonna work as a great chemical defense system. And trust me, animals do not like vinegar. Oh, that is spooky. Yeah. <laughs> I probably just blinded that car. He's just not done. Don't go the other way, but they're not gonna get on. I love him, he's got little little red pictures. Oh, yeah. Good lord, they're tight, they're cool. Yeah. He's the first mole. Oh yeah. Oh, he's tidy. Uh -huh. Little butt nugget. <laughs> I've never seen one that little. That's super neat. What? Oh, you found the skull? There oh, it holy is. crap. Nice one. Oh, that's wicked. Yeah. Nice. That will go in my assassin bug tank. <laughs> cool. I'm that's good what I do. I stick, I use skulls in all mine. So how cool is this? Vinegaroons in Arizona. And guess what? We're all done for the night. It's dark out here, man. But guess what? The vinegaroons are up and moving and we managed to see a couple of them how neat is that this girl's coming home with me she's going to be used in education guys it's been a ton of cool bug fun tonight but now we got to get back it's late and we got some bug light sheets we got to go look at All right, so <clears throat> we're taking the 
basket traps down here. But check that out, man. We're finding such a cool variety of insects coming to these things. And some of this stuff is similar or the same of what we're finding up at the light sheets in the stations. But uh, wow, what a what a cool longhorn beetle. This is one that the larva burrows into wood and eventually these large beetles exit those dead trees and come out to play. These are Chrysina barii, a beautiful beetle, really common down here in southern Arizona. And these things have been an absolute riot to play with because they're really common and they hurt when they walk on you. But anyway, look man, we found tarantulas coming into the lights tonight. We found a ton of cool bugs and moths and neat stuff going on. And the Chrysinas, both the Gloriosa and the Berii all came out in force tonight and provided a good show. So it's Miller Canyon, man, that we've never been here before. And it's a ton of cool bug fun. Black lighting in Arizona with the bug man. What an amazing night in Arizona. We explored at least four different environments met some incredibly talented people from the Arizona Bug Club, managed a night hike for vinegaroons, and Casey Smith introduced our crew to a brand new style of collecting using UV traps. Tomorrow is gonna be another crazy cool day cruising the high desert mountains in search of insects. We need to cross the Coronado National Monument en route to the beautiful Patagonia Mountains and eventually Harshaw. This trip promises some of the most scenic views that Arizona offers, not to mention a ton of unexpected discoveries along the way. So be sure and join the bug man on our next Arizona insect adventure. And thanks always for your support of this channel. Hey folks, be sure you like and subscribe to these videos. If you like what you see here, if you're getting entertained, if you're getting some education, that is what I do every single day. So, be sure and hit that subscribe button down there at the bottom, and I truly appreciate it. Thanks.